Good afternoon, or I should say good morning. Uh, and welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection Show for August. And as always, we want to thank DTC Communications for providing us with this service where we can show, showcase our community and the people that work and play in this community. And we're always happy about that, and we always enjoy doing it. You know, this is, I don't know where summer went. This is August. School's going to start. And um, <clears throat> in fact, I think our school starts the 7th of this month. Uh, election day, you probably won't see this before election day, but it's tomorrow. So a lot of things going on. And the We Care Cannon uh, project that we do for school students in Cannon County happened on the 29th. And of course, as always, it was a great success. Children got everything they needed, students did. And I mean from kindergarten through high school. Whatever they needed to start school, they got. No charge. <clears throat> we have a group of people that began doing this several years ago, and it has grown and grown, and I, I don't know of any other communities that, that have this program. So we're very fortunate, and they work hard. Uh, to get this done. And um, of course, our first football game, <laughs> that's hard to say, isn't it, is August 17th. And like I say, the first day of school will be August 7th. So everything starts and you go from sports to academics, back to sports. <laughs> and we have a lot of sports in our community now. So um, we're proud for that also. And we hope the students are ready. You know, I think some of them, I, I can't believe this really, but I think some of them may be a little bored with summer. They may be ready to get back into school, be around their friends and of course learn and you know how important that is. We do have a guest today and uh, we're very proud to introduce him, uh, our hospital. Um, the Woodbury St. Thomas Hospital has more or less, um, I want to say, not changed directions, but made some adjustments. And we have Mr. Brian Gill with us. How are you? I'm good, Carolyn. Thank you very much. How for long have you been with us, Brian, at uh, the hospital? I've been in my current <laughs> position for the last four months. I started uh, near the beginning of April this year. Uh, prior to that, I'd been working with St. Thomas Health in a different capacity, uh, working throughout the entire system uh, for a little more than a year. So I've been with the company for about a year and a half now. And you're happy? Oh, I'm very happy. It's uh, <laughs> been a great pleasure to uh, come to Woodbury and Stones River Hospital and take over as the chief administrative officer there. Um, had a meeting with our department managers and other leadership today is talking with them about obviously the challenges that exist for small community hospitals in rural Tennessee, but also being confident that despite those challenges that we can overcome those and provide a valuable service to the community here in Woodbury and in the rest of Cannon County. Right. Um, I, I think one of the keys for the hospital and one of the things that I, as I've been new trying to get out is to meet people such as yourself, uh, make introductions, and let them know that the hospital's still there, still very much alive and well, <laughs> and, and be a, an active member of the community. And you know, you mentioned We Care Can in the event that just happened last weekend, is we actually have several staff members that are actively involved in that and support that. I know historically the hospital has supported that financially mm -hmm. and with in-kind donations. And also that we've been um, active sponsors of uh, various uh, school uh, events and, and the athletic teams as well, because I think it's important that uh, whether or not we have uh, hospitals in Nashville or Murfreesboro, that we here focus on what's happening in Woodbury and in Cannon County and, and be good members of the community. It's called being a good community partner. Mm -hmm, certainly. And it takes it in a small community yeah. like this, it yeah. does. Um, a, a former boss of mine always said that all health care is local. And I really believe that despite 
uh, what we might hear on the news, uh, whether it be at the national level or even locally here in Tennessee and maybe what's happening in Nashville, is that it really boils down to that one-on-one -on -one interaction that individuals might have with the doctor or nurse when they're in the hospital and the care we provide and, and the services that we can offer them and just having that relationship. Uh, I think it's one of the things that I've always enjoyed and I, I really like about kind of uh, living and working in a small town, and I grew up in a small town similar to Woodbury, is that re really, for better or for worse, everyone knows everyone else. And so when <laughs> you come- They certainly do. Yeah, so when you come into the hospital, is the fact that your best friend or your neighbor, or someone that you've known for years is probably the nurse working uh, in the emergency room or, or in the doctor's office taking care of you. And that level of familiarity and the relationship you have, you, you can't find when you go to a, a, a larger community. So. I think it's invaluable for us to be able to be good community partners and be involved however we can and however it makes sense. Um, and so for me, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's trying to get out and meet people and introduce myself, let, let people know that uh, we're, we're taking, St. Thomas Health is taking a serious look in regards to how we deliver care in Cannon County, uh, what can we do to meet the needs of the residents of Cannon County, knowing that they have a variety of different challenges, not to, whether it be accessing care or being able to get into a specialist in a timely manner, and how can we meet that need and do it in such a way that, that meets the need of the community and that St. Thomas Health can still fulfill its mission going forward. So right. uh, that's one of my challenges as an administrator. And also just, again, being a good community partner, getting out there and letting people know who I am. Um, you know, and to that point is uh, being new to Woodbury. I don't actually live in the community at this time. I actually live in Springfield, Tennessee, so I have a little bit of a commute. You have a long drive. <laughs> I do have a long drive. Uh, I will tell everyone who's watching or listening, it's not the longest commute I've ever had, but it's close. Um, but f for me, I I'm willing to do it. I'm happy to do it. Uh, I think as people can understand is I'm, I, my daughter uh, just started school this week. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased with the school she's at. I want her to stay in school there. So obviously my, my family and I are willing to make the commitment that we're going to stay where we're at in Springfield and I'll continue to commute for the foreseeable future and, and until the time comes that we'll move. But uh, certainly I, I think what Woodbury does um, in supporting the, um, the community at whole and also the support that you've provided to the hospital over the years has been invaluable. Well, that's good. One thing that, that is, and this is in your favor, is the previous administrators or CEOs had to travel among several hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's much better when you have one that concentrates on one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I agree with you is that that has been a challenge to not fault any of the previous administrators. No, I think they were great. It, they it, were. It, it is a challenge when you have to shift your focus and attention to, to more than one location. And I think St. Thomas Health realized that that kind of business model was not really successful uh, for, for any of the hospitals that were involved. And so, hence, I came into my position in April. And, and I think, hopefully, that we've seen some incremental improvement, both from a, a growth standpoint of providing more services and also being more selective about the services we do provide to meet right. the need in the community. But again, also, to have someone present on a regular basis to be able to interact with the community and, and to be engaged. Um, I, I just can't stress that enough, obviously, as I keep coming back to that point, but I, I think it just shows from a standpoint the fact that I'm sitting with you here today on your show to, to discuss that. Right. And I would hate for our hospital to go away. Oh, I, I think everyone's in agreement with that. Uh, when I've met with you and other people in the community, and actually I was out at the Senior Center last month and, and, and met with many of the, the people there. and. Um, someone had mentioned while I was speaking the fact that they had a comment, a story they wanted to share about the hospital. And as you know, when you're standing up in front of a group of people that you just met, you're, you might be a little concerned about how that story is going to go. <laughs> and so admittedly, I had a little hesitation, but uh, certainly wanted to hear that gentleman's uh, story. And his story, I think, is representative of one that I've heard numerous times from people in the community was that um, he wasn't feeling well, 
And so he drove himself to the hospital and he said as soon as he pushed the button to open the doors to the emergency room, he had a massive heart attack. Oh. And he thanked us from the standpoint because without that emergency room being there, he, he believes he would have died. That's exactly right. And, and, and that's a story <laughs> that I hear repeatedly when I talk to people about how many times that uh, the emergency room, it has been a lifesaver for them, literally. Um, I know in the short time that I've been here, we've seen certainly patients that have come in, in, in you know, having an acute stroke or a heart attack, and we've been able to resuscitate them, keep them alive, and then really move them on to the next appropriate level of care. Because admittedly, those type of intensive services, specialized services, we won't provide here, but we can certainly be the, the doorway to access those cares, whether it be one of our major hospitals in Nashville or in Murfreesboro. Uh, and so that, for me, that we are the gateway, one, to keeping people alive, and two, making sure they have access to care that they need, whether it be more specialized or more intensive than we can provide. Well, you think about people, uh, even accidents, uh, you know, highway accidents, I mean, but you think about people that have accidents on the job or on mm -hmm. the farm or something you know if you're cut and bleeding mm -hmm. <laughs> you're out in the middle of a field you're going to want to get to the nearest emergency mm -hmm. room you can find oh certainly and, and, and to think that if stones river hospital wasn't here uh, your nearest emergency room would either be driving to McMinnville or into Murfreesboro. And so at least 20 minutes in any direction. And in an emergency, those 20 minutes may as well seem oh, like yes. hours. That's and true. so I really do think it's, it's a major service we can provide um, and that we continue to meet a need in the community. And, and from that standpoint, we're also looking in regards to when people do go into National and Murfreesboro to get maybe that specialized cardiac care or their stroke treatment, is that what can we do to support their recovery even after they come home to Woodbury in Cannon County, whether it be you know, physical therapy on an outpatient basis or if they need routine lab work or something, instead of having to drive all the way into town, they can get just get it right here at the hospital. You, you have people in a, we have a large elderly senior population. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't drive. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't have family to take them. So they appreciate somewhere. My mother was one of them. I took her to uh, Nashville mainly because that's where my uh, endocrinologist was at the time. So I took her with me for convenience sake, I guess. But she finally got to the point, she goes, I don't want to go there anymore. She says, I'll go right over here to the hospital. And I thought, well, so be it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we'll do. Well, I, I think anyone who is watching this and, and hearing us talk about the, the access to care mm -hmm. is knowing that if you, if, you know, nowadays if you go into Nashville, you go into Murfreesboro, uh, the, the travel itself is a challenge. And obviously we all know that traffic has gotten worse. Uh, the logistics of, of making that trip and having it go smoothly and easily is just even more challenging than it was before. So the idea is that if we can be in that access point and really meet a lot of those day-to-day -day needs that people might have, that I think we're serving a purpose for the community. Uh, again, you may still have to drive in to see your specialist, but even we're, we're looking at ways that how can we deploy uh, technology from a telehealth standpoint. So instead of having to drive all the way into Nashville, can you still get the same quality uh, visit with your physician um, via telehealth monitor? Uh, just essentially that doctor sitting in the office on the other side of the screen and you're sitting in the office with on your side of the screen, they can do everything that they need to do as far as part of the interview and the assessment in order to provide the care and then order any labs or tests that you might need, which you can get right there at the hospital for most of it. So I think we have to look in regards to how do we provide care for people in the community so we don't make that travel or any other issue being a burden for them that they can't overcome to get their care. That will be so difficult for people to adjust to, and it's coming to that everywhere, mm -hmm. even if you go to Nashville, is the fact that you'll be speaking with your doctor on a monitor. It, it certainly is an adjustment, um, and, and it really is of a mindset both for patients and for providers. Uh, certainly there are physicians I've spoken to <laughs> who are not warm to the idea. Right. Uh, though they know that they need to be able, that there's an unmet need out in, in the rural areas of the state. Instead of kind of wasting the time or burning up that their physician time, which is so valuable to get into uh, those rural areas to provide office hours, 
you know, telehealth becomes a viable resource. And it also reduces the burden on the patient of trying to get into Nashville or, Mur or Murfreesboro for care when you could just come to the hospital and, and then have a, can immediately be connected with your physician. We have local doctors that are on staff, do yes. we not? But we also have specialists that come in from other areas too, don't we? Yes, we do have a small group of specialists that practice at the specialty clinic, which is immediately adjacent to the hospital. I think everyone knows Dr. Weber. He's a cardiologist mm -hmm. who's been in the community for many, many years. Um, and actually, uh, Dr. Ferlardo, who is a new physician, uh, he's affiliated with St. Thomas Medical Partners. Uh, he's also started practicing because one of the things that we discovered was that while Dr. Weber is a well-established cardiologist, he has a five-week wait for any new patients. And we felt that in, in when those patients are needing to see a cardiologist for that level of specialty care, we need to be able to get them in sooner. And that's why Dr. Florido started practicing uh, at the specialty is clinic. Is that his specialty, his heart? Yeah. Yes, he is a cardiologist. Um, and so he has office hours in Murfreesboro, but he's also committing time to our hospital in Smithville and also the hospital here at Stones River. So uh, we're happy to have him. And my, my plan is we're looking in regards to how can we also provide those other specialty cares, uh, medical practices, such as orthopedics or pulmonology, where right now everyone has to maybe drive into Murfreesboro or Nashville or farther uh, to get in to see their care. And, and can we provide that in person or via telehealth? Do you know one thing that, well, it's more, this is just one of the things that we don't have here is eye care. That has been an issue I know that we've previously discussed and other people have mentioned to me that accessing not just optometry but ophthalmology uh, is a service that's not provided in the community and is there an opportunity for us to look at that. Uh, certainly there is. Um, I can't say whether or whether or not we'll be able to provide that service because there are a lot of you know variables that we have to look at from that standpoint. But it does worth us investigating. And if you know, admittedly, I, I try to be very transparent with everyone when I can. Is that if we look at all the variables and the answer is no, we can't do that because maybe for some reason it's not feasible. Then I'm going to come back and let everyone know that. But if there's certainly a way that we can provide that service and meet the need of the community, because to your point, with a an aging population and even not so aging population, eye care is a major issue um, and eye health. And so if we can meet that need, there, there is a great opportunity for us to do that there. You know, <clears throat> another partner you might look at uh, as far as for eye care and everything is the Lions Club because that's one of their main mm -hmm. missions. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm a Lions member and I also know that um, I get calls from optometrist's office and other, for people who have a difficult time paying for their glasses. And I can't tell you how many children, because the Lions Club goes to the schools and tests the eyes, mm -hmm. that have been referred to specialists that had serious eye problems. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I certainly think there's a need. He may not have to be here every day, but if there was somebody that could come in oh, monthly certainly. or weekly or well, whatever. Well, well, certainly from the standpoint of just having someone locally, whether even if it was weekly or once or twice a month, to have hours to, again, to relieve the burden of people trying to drive in for, for care and treatment and have that care provided locally. And it may be an opportunity for the hospital to partner with the Lions Club or other civic organizations that, that are willing to support that. Um, I know one of our other sister hospitals historically has worked very closely with its other community leaders and other organizations to help expand uh, a pharmacy that they had on site for the hospital. I certainly think for me that's a model for us to look at at Stones River and the Woodbury community is where are there opportunities for maybe one organization or the hospital by itself can't reach the goal, but if we work collectively together, we can and meet the needs of the community. One of the other things I wanted to ask you previously, we had had, and I'm not sure it's called this anymore, the Riverside Center. Is it still active? Yes, uh, the Riverside Center, for people who aren't familiar with it, is actually an inpatient mental health program for older adults. Um, and that program still exists. 
And actually, I, I'm proud to say we're actually going through a remodeling and update of the, of the program right now. Uh, St. Thomas Health has invested almost a, about three quarters of a million dollars in mm -hmm. renovating that unit. Uh, uh, quite honestly, it, it, there's been a lot of deferred maintenance and other issues that have, have not been addressed. And with my arrival, we started work on that. Uh, we expect that to be done by the middle of August, speaking of uh, everything happening right now. So uh, really looking forward to that being open and, and, and available to everyone. And we see referrals for older adults needing mental health care, not just from Woodbury or Cannon County, but from the entire uh, Middle Tennessee region. Uh, we get referrals as far away as Knoxville. And so that gives you the idea of the fact that there's just a, a lack of mental health services for older adults. And we also know that that same need exists for adults regarding inpatient mental health treatment. And back in April, we actually opened up a small six-bed adult mental health unit there at Stones River Hospital. And each month, we're seeing our, our patient volume there grow uh, day by day. Again, it just speaks to the need that I think we're all aware of that we may not always talk about, but certainly conscious of that, there. that it is there, <laughs> uh, whether it be someone with a long-standing history of schizophrenia or manic depressive illness or just general depression, and maybe it's been complicated uh, because they've become addicted or they're misusing their, their prescription opioid medication or they're using heroin, which we, I know we've heard a lot about in the news over the past several years. And, and the, the sorry state is the fact that that's a very real um, issue for rural Tennessee. And we see that almost every day with patients that we're treating. So our, our goal, our objective is to be able to treat those people, make them well, get them in, on that path to recovery, and make sure when they leave us that they get to the appropriate services and resources that they need. Uh, the same way with rehab. Now most of our we used to have a rehab center at the hospital. Is it still there or are they sent to our rehabilitation center? Stones River Hospital no longer has an inpatient rehabilitation program. Uh, those services have been moved either to River Park Hospital in McMinnville or to Rutherford Hospital in Murfreesboro. But we do have an outpatient rehabilitation program. And actually, it's not surprising that we've done that because a lot of rehabilitation services, uh, because of the advancements in treatment of uh, the, you know orthopedic injuries, shoulders, knees, hips, etc., a lot of the care has moved out side of the hospital. So maybe historically, I can remember when you'd maybe have a knee surgery, hip surgery, you'd actually convalesce in bed for three days before they got you up and, and walked you around. <laughs> Nowadays, we know the fact that hours after surgery, they're going to have you up and moving because now we know that movement is the best way to recover from those type of surgeries. And so a lot of people go home very shortly after their surgery, but they still need physical therapy or occupational yeah. therapy. And those services we provide. And that's actually uh, one of the things I think is kind of an untapped gem for us is we have a, a great team of physical and occupational therapists. We can certainly access speech therapy when we need it uh, and really meet a need in the community, especially for older adults who, who may need that type of therapy and, and conditioning after surgery or after an injury. Well, I broke both my heels at one time. And so, yes, I needed rehab and I did go to the hospital well, and they we were, were great. great. Uh, they were. Yep. And I didn't know if that was still available. It is still available. I, I think it's one of our, our, our hidden gems in the hospital is that people don't necessarily think of the hospital here in Woodbury providing outpatient services, but the physical therapy actually does kind of a very robust business and it's certainly something that I would like to see us grow to meet the need of the community. Uh, I think, you know, the fact that we also have, you know, x-ray and CT scans on an outpatient basis so you don't have to go into Murfreesboro to have an x-ray done if, if, the, if your doctor orders that on it. Uh, and also lab services. So, you know, many times you go to the doctor, they order labs to be drawn, they want blood or urine or something of that nature. All that can be done at the hospital as well. So there you go. There you it's go. It's all there. You just got to take advantage yep. of it. That's, that's wonderful. You've answered a lot of questions that I think people uh, have had uh, questions about. I think you've answered those because. Well, very good. And that was, and like I say, the, I know the community for some years, even though we've had great CEOs there, but they had to share their time. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult for them. 
you know, even though sometimes you, when you go to a place, you want to talk to the man in charge, mm -hmm. and they'll say, well, you have to wait till Thursday. He's not in till Thursday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now if you want to complain, he's there every day, well, except and, weekends. <laughs> and I'll take compliments as well. So. Yes, he will, and I, I will. I'm going to give him one right now. I don't know if this is due to him, but our hospital has the cleanest floors of any place I have ever been in. It's well, very impressive. It is. When well, you, I'm glad to hear that. You uh, walk in the front door, it is. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to say, I don't know that you're doing that, but... Well, I'm personally not cleaning the floors. I will give credit uh, to, to our staff that work very diligently about keeping the hospital clean. Because um, quite honestly, we, we know that that is a, a real indicator of satisfaction, both for patients and visitors, is. to have a clean building. And, and, and I think we all expect that of a hospital. Well, I'm, I was impressed. Very good. When I walked in, it, it's impressive. So uh, I'll be sure I let the staff know all that. All right. Well. And you still have a... Can you still eat over at the hospital? Yes, um, and actually we have a new manager in our cafe. He's, he's been there just a little bit longer than I have. Uh, we recently did a revamp of the menu. Uh, I think if you think of hospital food, this is not that. Uh, this is actually kind of, uh, you know, a meat and, and three sides. And so you, great choices every day, Monday through Sunday. Um, I have eaten there myself, and I still think um, I'm doing well. Uh, so I uh, encourage everyone to come visit, and it's quite economical in the grand scheme of things. All right. It is. Mm -hmm. It was before you had a large group mm -hmm. that used to come over there every day for lunch. Yeah, and I'd be happy to have a large group come back every All day right. for lunch. All right. Well, so. go back and eat over there at the hospital. <laughs> We'd love to see everybody. So. That's right. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show, and I hope all of this interaction helps. I certainly Because do. as time goes on and you get to know mm -hmm. people, the better it is for you. Certainly. And again, anyone watching or listening, if you have any feedback for us in regards to and our ideas, ideas or suggestions of what we can do to meet the needs of the community, what we can do better, what we should be doing differently, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with anyone about that. Because I think that's what that's what healthcare is about. Is we need to meet the needs of the community, and um, I think Woodbury is a special place. Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, I live here, but I do think it's special. We thank you very much. Thank you very much for Carolyn. coming on. Appreciate and it. And I'll see you again. I look forward to it. Hopefully not because of a medical problem. <laughs> yeah, yes. I always <laughs> because appreciate visitors. Because I will visitors. see you. All right. All right very very good. good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Lindsay, we're waiting for you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. If you have to go, I know you're a busy man, or you can sit here through Actually, the rest I, of this. I do need to step out, but I appreciate I mean, the opportunity. All right. All right thank, thank we're going to have you back. Okay, very all good. Right. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, dear, you're here because you are everything Art Center, right? That is correct. Everything about the Art Center of Cannon County, I know a little bit about. Okay, so. well, there you go. <laughs> I know very little about it, but well, I'm here, good. and I like being here, so. Good. Well, um, for those of you that are interested in what is coming up next on our stage, we just closed Grease, the musical, which was fantastic. Um, sold out every single show that we did, so we added more shows and then sold them out too. So um, I hope you had a chance to come see that. It oh, was, I heard a lot of compliments. It was a lot of, a lot of fun, um, just some great music and a great cast, so very proud of that one. Um, so coming up next um, is Titanic, the musical. It's rated PG-13. It runs from August 10th through the 25th. Um, and um, it is a little different than the movie. A lot of people may have seen the movie of Titanic, but this goes a different storyline. Um, but we're going to have a fantastic set. It is beautiful music. I'm anxious to see the set. I, they amaze me. 
at what they can do in a small area to build the sets that they do. <laughs> I want to see how you're going to do the water. <laughs> well, there'll be a little bit of theater magic, you know. Um, we have to invite the audience to kind of go there with us um, in their minds a little bit. Um, but, like, it will still be very impressive. And like I said, the cast is very talented. The music is beautiful. If nothing else, just come to hear the music because it's really stunning. Um, so, Titanic the Musical, August 10th through the 25th. And then... We're doing uh, a murder mystery play based on the Agatha Christie novel. So if any of you Agatha Christie readers out there, um, it's called And Then There Were None. And it is, it runs September the 28th and runs through October 13th. So in the fall, a little before Halloween, I think it's a perfect opportunity to come see a murder mystery play. Um, and then we are closing our um, 2018 season with Hello, Dolly, which is a classic musical theater piece. It's just a few That even good. sounds fun. Yes, it is. It's going to be great. Um, so that will run November 2nd through the 17th. Um, so a lot of great stuff coming up with our shows. What is your Christmas? Usually you have a Christmas show or event. Uh, do you know what that is in December? So we're doing a, a concert, which will be um, the uh, Ultimate Oldies group is coming back. Oh, okay. That was a big hit. Yes. Um, we sold out their shows. They did a country uh, show, country concert earlier in the year. So they're coming back to do their classic oldies hits with a little bit of Christmas mixed in there. Um, right. and so that is going to be a lot of fun. Get your tickets early for that one because I know that they're they going to sell, sell out. out. Um, it is on our concert calendar, which I saw, I peaked and I saw that you had there. Right. Yeah. There. there it so is. it runs uh, December 14th through the 16th. And well, if I would have looked on the back of that, I would have known. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Um, so that's our Christmas concert that we have. Um, this Christmas, uh, we're also doing um, in December a theater for young audience show, um, part of our school matinee series, um, and it is not necessarily Christmas, but it's definitely a lot of fun. We're doing Madagascar the musical, which is based on the DreamWorks film. Um, a lot of fun music, some really great characters, um, and that is running, the public show is on December 8th. So if you've got kids or no kids, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, um, definitely get tickets to come see that because it's going to be a lot of fun. So that is what we've got going on. Um, actually, as far as concerts go, we have one concert before um, the Ultimate Oldies concert in December. And it is the Jake Leg Stompers. I have a hard time saying that. And Jake I don't Legg know Stompers. why. <laughs> uh, it's a fun name to say. It is. Um, I have heard that they are a little bit bluegrassy, yeah. um, but they definitely have mix in um, some other genres in there. They're kind of ha something unique and all their own. I don't think you can really put a title on it. Um, but I've heard them before, and they're fantastic. Very talented musicians. A great show. So if you're interested in the Jake Leg Stompers, uh, that is on September 1st. So get your tickets for that as well. And are we going to talk about the White Oak Craft Show? <laughs> we are. White Oak is right around the corner. Um, it was fantastic last year. Yes, Beautiful it was. weather. Amazing turnout. Um, we are planning for all of those and hoping for the weather to be good again um, in September. And this will be an outside event. Yes even though the art center will be open, but yes. most of your exhibitors and everything, well, all of them really, won't they? They'll all be set up outside. Yes, um, we will have a showcase here in the lobby. What we do is we collect um, a prize item, I guess, uh, for each of the vendors, and we take it to display in our lobby, kind of like an art gallery. Right. So if you come into the lobby of the art center before you head out to all the booths, you can kind of get a feel for um, a little bit of everything that we've got out there um, in with our vendors. Uh, we are expecting 80 plus vendors this year, oh, which is going to be huge. <laughs> we have lots of parking. Now, there's not an admission fee, but there is a parking fee, right? That's correct. It's $3 to park. It's $3 per car. But all of that money um, is being donated to the um, Cannon County High School cross country and the, the band over there. Right. They use it as a fundraiser. They help us out with the parking um, and it's just a, a fun way for them to be involved as well. Well, I know I've worked parking before and you know, I, most people say, well, sure, you know, just let me go in. And then 
like the drive-in, the Moonlight Drive-In, they give away tickets. Right, they do. And everything, and so most of the time people are real happy, but every now and then you'll run into one that wants to fuss about that $3, so. That's true. It can be irritating to have to pay for parking, uh, but think about what you're giving back to. I mean, the local community, the, the band program, the cross country program, which is fantastic at the high school. Um, but also, you know, you're, you get to walk around and see all kinds of art and. Well, the thing is, you need help parking. That's true. <laughs> I mean, we fill up. Yes. You we know, do. there's, and there's a big parking lot, but they also use part of the field out there for that too so mm -hmm. yeah you need that help and that's you can't do much of anything for three dollars that's true it's very true <laughs> it's definitely Nothing. worth it i think for, for oh i do too i do too because most craft fairs would sh you would have to pay a fee to get in uh, of this quality these are jured um, artisans it's not just, you're not going to find tables with socks on them and That's things right. like that. You're not going to. Right. All of these vendors have been put through a screening process and been voted on by a board. Um, and it is all handmade products. And we have jewelry. We've got baskets. We have woodworkers and blacksmiths, soaps and candles and so much more. And jewelry. All those, oh, yes. The jewelry is all my kinds favorites. of jewelry. And, you know, some of the some of the items are seasonal items like last year, I believe, or maybe it was a year before there was a booth that made um, Christmas bags out of burlap oh, okay. and things like that, you know, and stenciled something festive on it that was unique people like that i used them yeah absolutely um, and we'll also in december we'll have our holiday or maybe november we'll have our holiday bazaar um, which is a little bit different it's definitely downscaled from our big white oak craft fair weekend um, but we will have that that's an indoor event later on in the year uh, i think last year we had that the same time they had the christmas the county country Christmas. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And it worked out well because Good. it's, and the same way with the White Oaks Craft Fair, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they included the rest of the town in that and the Short Mountain Distillery will have some things going on that weekend. We have a big flea market and they always do well with this, whether they're part of it or not, because they're right across the street. But people will ask you after they've come to the White Oaks, they'll say, well, is there anything else going on in town? So we have a lot of antique stores around the square uh, and specialty stores. And uh, you're certainly welcome to go down there. And, you know, I don't know that, um, well, it's a little bit of everything you can find. So, you know, you can spend the day here and maybe a couple of days. I don't know. Absolutely. But we have people that come in for that, really, from other states. Yeah, we do. That come in for the White Some Oak. of our vendors even are from out of state, and they make this is a priority on their calendar every year to be a part of this craft show. Um, it's There's a big crowd. Yes, it's definitely well known. Um, and like I said, good quality crafts and art and they do. jewelry and everything else. Um, the quality of the product speaks, speaks volumes, I think. It does. Mm -hmm. And you can tell the difference. Absolutely, you can. You can, because I, I know there's the art center has a um, an area where you can buy artisan type, a gift shop. And <clears throat> when people come in, sometimes they ask for things that I thought, no, you're not going to find that here. <laughs> it's not going to be here. But they all can't get over how pretty the pottery is. Uh, they have soaps. They have jewelry out there. Lots of unique items, lots of woodwork items. So, you know, we have people that stop in, well, every week. It always seems like they come in on a Wednesday, too. <laughs> but they come in to look at at the thing, at, they're just traveling by and they say, well, 
We've seen this, but we've never stopped. We had no idea this was in here. It is pretty so. impressive, um, and I, I have had several people that, like you say, um, well, we live locally, but we've never stopped here, so we decided to come by, um, and that would be a fantastic thing to do if you haven't done it already. Come by and see us. Um, we've got two art shows up right now. We use our, our lobby space as a gallery space, um, and right now we just put up a brand new art show. It's Carol Burning's art, so if you um, are familiar with her, but she does a lot of portraits and landscapes and they really are beautiful. Uh, she's very talented. Um, so come by and see her art show. And then here in the hall where we are, um, I don't know if you can see some of the paintings behind us here. We have some beautiful sunset and skyscapes um, paintings by Jamie Parks. And she will have these paintings up here through the end of August. So don't miss these shows uh, for sure because they're, they're beautiful. These are beautiful paintings, they are. The other thing is, this room that we're in right now, which is huge, mm -hmm. is you can rent yes. for weddings, events, meetings, banquets, mm -hmm. whatever. It is one of the uh, areas that we have in Cannon County that can be rented for any of those. You just need to call the Art Center at 615-563-2787 and ask about everything. Don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to stop. I had one lady tell me one time, she says, well, I've never been in here. And she says, I've seen it. I just didn't know what y'all did in here. And I said, this is a huge facility. So I often wondered, well, what did they think we did in there? Because we have lots of storage, probably not enough. Probably not enough. Because they keep props and everything. Mm -hmm. The office is here. They have a great display of baskets, homemade baskets, that have been made by local artisans and some not so local, but I recognize a lot of names up there. We have a and that's a dying art right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. So. It is a dying art. The, we have a beautiful permanent white oak basket display. Yes, A lot do. of families, we have families come in and say, well, I wanted to see my grandmother or my great-grandmother's baskets, and so we have those here, uh, which is really special to us. And then we have some specialty stores attached to the art center. Uh, they're independently owned. We have the... Uh, uh, I think they still refer to it as the kitchen, mm -hmm. but you have Short Mountain Cultures and Hidden Half Hill Farms. Half Hill Farms, I right. like get that mixed up too. <laughs> if you've ever heard of kombucha, this is the place because Hidden or the Half Hill Farm has that, and you can come in and get a tasting of it. The organic, uh, I have a display of them. Uh, the other store is organic and just like with this is multicolored popcorn. Now when I was young they used to have that and I used to get so excited because you'd have different colors of popcorn. I don't know why that excited It was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but you have that plus they have so many other items in there. A lot of fermented items, coleslaw, a lot of unique organic items in the same way with uh, Half Hill Farms. So don't forget they to shop where, go in there and check it out because you'll be so amazed at the items that they do have. Yeah. I've seen so, people come in with big growlers of yeah, big Yeah, because they refill fill them. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they with do. The kombucha. It's so good for you, too. And, it, and I have tasted it. <laughs> I have, but... It's it, an acquired taste. Well, I, you know, I can take a little at a time, mm -hmm. but listen, they have people that come every week or every Absolutely. month in there, plus the other things that they have too. So uh, it's just unique and it's something different. And uh, they, I think they ship a lot of items out of Cannon County. I'm sure that they do. And I know that they go to a lot of the local farmers markets as well. Oh yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> This is all. This this is all healthy. Absolutely, and they make their uh, make several different flavors of the kombucha as well. So if yes, you don't like do. one so much, try a different flavor. And they'll let you. <clears throat> they'll let you taste it mm -hmm. if you come in there. And like I say, don't get discouraged by the first taste. 
<laughs> because, well, you know, I look at it this way. Everybody has always told me how if you drink so much vinegar every day, that's, that's supposed true. to help your digestion and everything. So I got a bottle of that, okay? And it had vinegar with the mother, which kind of scared me because I didn't understand that. But anyway, I would take, I don't know, that much every morning. I just, I thought, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing I ever put in my mouth. You know, but I don't feel that way about the kombucha. It has a, a different taste, but it's nothing like vinegar. <laughs> I, that was, I thought I'll just be unhealthy. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Not as bad as vinegar, there you go. But, the, but if you come in here, they've got an alternative, does the same thing, just tastes better. Mm. So, And both of them, both of the stores in there do. Okay, is there anything else, Lindsay, we need to go over? Um, well, we did just announce our 2018-2019 um, uh, school show series completely because the kids are getting ready to go back to school. I've been to a couple teacher conferences already. Um, we're going to have one here at the Art Center. They've, uh, they're going to use this space for the Cannon County teacher um, in service. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come and talk to them tomorrow morning about that. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, we're doing Madagascar this December. We are doing Disney's Aladdin Jr. Um, and that is in March of the 2019 year. So um, the public shows for that are gonna be March 9th and the 16th. Um, and then our last one is um, in May and it is Curious George and the Golden Meatball. Oh, well that. <laughs> So, hey, they love it. Kids go. Absolutely. Just, this is the one where they bring the kids from yes. all over Tennessee. Uh, so the <laughs> Curious George um, runs May 4th and the 11th. Um, and if you are interested in coming, um, those we have public shows for all of those. We also do school shows where we um, invite schools to come, take a field trip, and, and come see those shows. Um, so let your teachers know, let your children's teachers know um, that that is available. And and uh, have us give them a call. You won't be sorry, that's a good field trip. <laughs> Absolutely. Most little kids, that'll be the only live show they'll ever see. Uh, or sometimes the first, Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's been really interesting for me to you know, meet some of the students that are local around here and say, oh, I, I went and took a field trip, you know, several years ago and I loved it. And um, some of those kids decide that that is something that they really like to be interested in doing. So they show up at our next auditions and then they get to be in a show. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's pretty great. cool. That's like the junior conservatory and the senior conservatory. Those kids, they sound so different from the time when they come in. Now, some of them do that every year. Some of them do. And you can kind of tell yes. which ones they have. But they, they're so different from the first day they come in and when that's over. And that's just two weeks, isn't yeah, it? It is. We do um, a big summer camp all summer. We had a very successful summer this year. Um, so we do a junior conservatory camp, which uh, is kids going into first through sixth grade. Um, and it's a two week camp. It takes place in June. Um, and they learn singing, dancing, acting, um, as long with as long as um, and they have several life skills that they learn as well. It's not just teach them how to be on stage. A lot of what we teach applies to real life. Um, and we hope that they take some of that away with them. But after they learn all that, then at the end of the two weeks, they put on a big showcase for their friends and family. Uh, and it's always a blast to see them, you know, out there performing for their family. And uh, the families are excited and they're excited. And it's a, it's a great feeling. Um, so we do that. Saying, I knew she was talented. Yes, I've known right. that all along. Um, and then we do a senior conservative which is for our older students um, and that is anybody going into 7th through 12th grade and that takes place in July um, so that'll be next summer but um, if you have grandkids or kids that would be interested or you know think they might be uh, interested in being on stage but they don't know they've never tried it before this is how to get them involved definitely so it really I guess what we're trying to tell you here is there's something going on at the Art Center year-round. Absolutely. I don't think that there's ever a time when there isn't something <laughs> that's happening. So, okay, dear. 
Have you told us everything? That's everything that I have down here. That's everything you know, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Well, that's, I can understand that. One of the other things I want to bring up at this point in time is our farmer's market, which is located at the uh, covered, um, I want to say carport. It's bigger than that. Pavilion, yeah. Pavilion, out in the parking lot of the art center, because that's where they hold the farmer's market every Saturday morning from starting about six until they either run out or until noon. Uh, you know, we've waited on tomatoes all year. And so finally they're here. They have plenty of homegrown tomatoes. They have uh, Jessica Gannon is there and she has something a little different. She has con container plants and um, I think like fruit trees and things like that. So that's something a little different for our farmer's market. And then Kenneth Beatty, of course, he has the honey. And a lot of people like to buy the honey. So he's here. Irene Hollis has her homemade fried pies. And those are to die for. So you want to come and get some of these. And if anybody was going to run out of anything, I'd say it'd be her. Um, they have a large selection of tomatoes, okra, corn, potatoes, peppers, um, everything you would find at a, at a farmer's market. And we have several farmers that bring in their items. And like I say, it's always on a Saturday. And so don't forget to come down here and see what they've got because I love it when the farmer's markets are. I love the fresh vegetables, I do. Uh, some of the other things that we'll be having, Lindsay, I know you're watching the front desk. If you have to go, that's okay. If not, you can sit here with me. It doesn't matter. Well, I might step out and grab the phones. Uh, well, you might stop by the market in here mm -hmm. and ask them if any of them want to come over here and talk to okay. us a little bit about it. Yeah, I'll okay. peek in there. All righty. Tell them if I put them on the spot, it's okay. <laughs> All right, August 3rd and 4th, which will, I don't even know if this tape will be up by then, but it is Red Apple Days in Auburn Town, and they always have a big time Friday and Saturday, the first weekend in August always. And of course, on Friday night, it starts at six o'clock with a gospel uh, concert. And then Saturday, there's events that go on all day. So you may not see this till after it's over, but kind of mark your calendar for next year because they have a big time over there. Um, let me see, August 17th and 18th is a hunter education course. And of course, hunting season will be coming up. This will be held at the Senior Center and it has special in instructions for students. And, um, you know, all I can say about that is if you're going to go out and shoot and use a gun and everything, you probably need to learn some learn about it before you go and do that. So come on in and sit down right here. And before we go on with the others, we'll just, what is your name? Huh? Uh, Lisa Martin Bowman. Okay, and you are with uh, Short Mountain Cultures. I do, I right? work with Short Mountain Cultures. Okay, tell them a little bit about all that you sell. Oh. There. All that we sell, um, we do fermented goods. We use wild fermentation, um, the water kefirs, uh, coconut kefir, which is uh, a dairy-free version. Um, we do sauerkrauts, kvass. Um, what else do we do? You have a lot of stuff. We in have a there. lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and we use we use the kitchen um, to ferment everything. So, and it's in house, and we use all organic and all local uh, produce that we right. get from various farmers in the area. And you even have candy? Yeah, we do um, concessions and things for the theater when that's going on. Uh, we have a small natural food grocery, usually mostly organic. Um, we try to like, um, we're also doing bulk foods now. So, you know, that is a new thing, which is pretty exciting. You have a lot of product in a, a small area. Yeah. You really do. And it's very interesting. Yep. Very clean. Yep, and then also um, we're, we have eggs that we get from one of the two people that do 4-H here at the school. Right. And so that's helping them, you know, learn how to do and take care of animals. Um, and then eternal returns, like 
candles, like different various Nashville-based and local-based artisans also. Pottery, jyes, gourd lamps, et cetera. So. Oh, you have to see the gourd lamps. That's They're gorgeous. A big, they are gorgeous. <laughs> they really are. Yeah. And they are made out of gourd. Yeah. But it kind of reminds you of Tiffany. It, it <laughs> absolutely does. It absolutely does. And I went to an exhibit at the Metropolitan in New York, and it was amazing to see those live and to see his is very similar in nature. Yes, it yeah. is. So. so that's good. So you just yeah. have a variety of things. Plus, the uh, you're right there with Half Hill Farms. We are. And they have the kombucha plus the oils. Yes. Um, and the mushroom tinctures and various other, yeah, the apple cider, the vinegars and different kinds of fire root. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The things that people come in and ask me about <laughs> that I have no idea that they have. You can always send them over. We'll help I them do out. <laughs> every time. Hey, they know they just didn't find you. They, they know when they come in because they ask me. Right. You know, well, where is this and where is that? And I thought, okay, I think I know <laughs> what we're going to see. Fantastic. But they're kind of on the side of the art center. Mm -hmm. uh, facing the front, uh, facing the highway, but it's on the side of the building. And uh, they have a lot of people that come in and shop here, and I'm sure you ship a lot of things out of the county, don't you? We don't ship at this point because it um, requires to stay cold, but we do do the farmer's markets in Nashville, Franklin, um, and have various stores that are in Nashville that are carrying our products now. So there's a lot of places you can get things. Well, I think... I think the Half Hill Farms I think drop they might ship things. because I yeah, think they're I think able they to do, do it. Um, some of their stuff doesn't require to stay cold, cold yeah. and so that's they can ship for sure. Um, yeah, it's just right now everything that we have needs to stay cold or will continue probably to ferment and okay. be a mess. Well, that's fine. That's mm -hmm. fine. I like the uniqueness of it. Yeah, it's so. something we're looking at probably into in the future that if we okay. can figure out how to make that What happen. are your hours then? Um, 10 to 6 during Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends it's 10 to 4. Okay. Yeah. Well, I see cars over here. Sometimes I'll come in on the weekend and and I see cars over there. So I thought, okay, they're doing business over there. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and then when there's theater productions or whatever, we're open for concessions. Right. And so that's in the evenings. Well, that makes it good too. Yeah. And so, plus I get a taste of all that. It's don't true. They? And yeah, come in for samples and we'd love to do it. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Oh my God, for thank you so much. In. All right. All right, I haven't much time, and I'm going to get around to a couple of more things here. The Hunter's Education course is August 17th and 18th at the Senior Center, and you can call 615-203-4688, and they'll tell you all about it, or call the chamber, and I'll be glad to give you the numbers. Um, August 25th, we just had a cruise in on the square, on Saturday, it was the biggest one we've had. There was over 100 cars there and a lot of spectators. We love it and we want them to come back because the next one will be August 25th from 4 to 7.30 on the square. And then, of course, in September will be the 20th Color of Fall Car and Truck Show. So. Um, yeah, we're gearing up for that. Uh, believe me, we are. And September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd is the Cannon County Walking Horse Association, and they will hold their Labor Day trail ride. Horses and riders will meet at the fairgrounds at 11 o'clock on Saturday, ride to the campgrounds, and have a weekend of camping, horse shows, music, dancing, food. It's all there. And that will be the 1st of September. 8th and 9th of September, of course, is the White Oak Craft Fair at the Art Center and around town because everybody gets involved in this. And I think I'm about out of time, and we hope you've enjoyed the show, and I hope we will see you again next month. Thank you for watching.